Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over the reporting capabilities in Cisco Meraki and how you can use that information to monitor and troubleshoot and improve the network performance in your organization. So we, ha we have all heard the saying that knowledge is power and that is true. But knowledge is power when we know how to apply that knowledge, right? And in this case, Meraki offers the knowledge by giving us detailed reports on the organization settings and performance. Now, it's up to us to come over to this section and understand what is being shown to us and determine whether we need to make configuration changes to improve the network performance. So you would go to organizations, right? And also pay attention that this reporting section is for the entire organization, at least the default view. And then you go to summary report. And as you can see here, you're going to see your entire organization. If you have different networks, you are going to see the option to select specific networks, right? So we're going to get to it in a second. Let's go over the entire organization first. So when you come here, the statistics that are going to be displayed to you are going to be based on all your Meraki equipment for that specific organization. An interesting point that you have to look into is when you are looking at this statistics view, that is based on the on a specific time frame. And in this case, the default is last date. But if you click here, you'll notice that you can change that. You can change that to a month, custom range, past week or whatever. So I'm just going to select past week. And as you could see, that's going to automatically update the information that is being displayed. Or you could change that to past month. And that information is going to change again and it's going to show you clients per day. Um, so let me go back to uh, past week so we can continue okay so when you come here something that you would have to pay attention to and again this is for the entire organization is if there is any anomalies as you could see or any issues that's going to be displayed right on this screen for instance based on this report I have a uh, client that is considered with high usage and it's this client right here. I have two clients that are using over 100 gigs of data, right? And this is one client and this is the other client. Now, clients in this case does not mean host devices, right? Like computers, printers, or anything attached to it. It could also be considered a, like you see right here in this case, it could be considered a switch that is a client to the entire organization. Um, we're going to go deeper into it later. In this case, when I come down here to this section of the reporting, you're going to see top clients usage. And I have this device. I know this is the switch because as you could see, the name tells me what it is. But I also have this client device, and I want to investigate further what's going on with this client. So what you can do, um, you can click on it and open the client details page. So I'm just going to right click and open on a new tab so I don't move away from here. And that's going to tell you more information about the client. As you could see, this is a Roku device. It gives you information. It shows you general information about the uh, 
type of applications and ports that are, it's being used. And it shows you information if there's any layer three or layer seven, you know, far, firewall rules, policies applied to it. And you can see that all right here. So in this case, again, this is my test network. It's not a big deal, but if you are in a production network, this is a useful information for you to come into and see what is happening in your network. Perhaps you'll notice that you have some devices that are consuming high levels of bandwidth and you might want to know why, right? Especially if those are desktop computers or some devices that you know they shouldn't be performing in that way that's going to give you the tool for you to investigate even further into it. So that's what you sh you will see here. If you keep scrolling down, this section is going to show you the top devices. As you could see, it's going to show you that information based on, on MAC addresses. Uh, and this is for, for the network. In this case, this is my test network, and these are the only devices that I have. But if you have a large network or in your production network, you'll see all your switches here with the percentage that they're using, and then that's going to help you determine whether you would like to redesign your network, right? For instance, if I, if I had a production environment, and I have many switches and I see that one of my switches is being utilized at 64 to 80%, like even though it's not gonna break the switch, that's gonna make me consider if I have like five, 10 different switches in the stack, why is it that one of them is taking most of the load? So that's gonna help me determine, okay, maybe I'm gonna move some of this equipment to different switches. Uh, so I'm gonna have better uh, performance overall. And if you keep scrolling down, that's going to show you, this is another useful section right here where it says tap client device manufacturers by usage. This is super useful if you have a large distributed network uh, over many campuses. And then you would like to know if, there's specific, if there is a specific models or a specific type of devices that are utilizing more bandwidth than any other devices, right? Not everything in a network are computers or laptops or phones. You have machinery, you have a special equipment. And it's very good for you to pay attention to that, especially if you have a sensitive equipment in your network, like medical devices or very unique equipment to your organizations. You want to make sure that or if you have like industrial equipment, you have to make sure that whatever traffic is happening is, or whatever is happening there is normal to that specific type of equipment. If you know that you have some medical equipment that is simply being used to monitor heart rates or to monitor certain things that you're not expecting to see that much traffic out of it, but then you come here and you see that it has high utilization, you have to pay attention to it and look into it further to determine what the problem is. And the same comes here if you come down to uh, operating systems, right? You're going to see, um, you know, if you have, uh, what, what are the most, uh, the, the busiest operating systems. Now, this is not 100% accurate. Uh, this is based on the signatures Meraki sees out there. In my case, in my test environment, I don't have any Windows XP. I don't have an Xbox. But again, so those are the things that um, you would have to look into it even further if you see something like, oh, that your Mac OS are taking 99% of your traffic, you have to know why or, or either ignore that or do further investigation. <clears throat> now, this is self-explanatory. As you could see, it's super useful. The other thing, as I mentioned to you, you can change to single networks. And when you change to single networks, you're going to see the networks and the devices for that specific network. 
in my case I only have one network and I have one switch one firewall and one access points in this test network so that is all that I'm gonna see but if you had multiple networks you'll see them listed here along with our categories now if I came here and I selected wireless for instance you know that when you select wireless you may have multiple SSIDs in your wireless network so you could see the report based on the entire wireless settings of your organization which will include all the SSIDs or you can filter by specific SSIDs. In this case, I only have two enabled SSIDs on this access point, and I can filter on that, right? I can select, I just want to see information on this SSID. Once you do that, that's going to, again, show you more information about what's happening in that SSID. As you could see, you are going to have the same categories as any other report, the top clients, devices by manufacturer, so on and so forth. But something that is unique is that once you identified a client device that you would like to do further investigation, you can click on that client device right from here. I'm just going to right click and open in a new tab so I don't lose that the existing um, uh, window and as you could see here this is going to bring up the devices or the clients page now this is not anything unique uh, what I'm trying to say is that you could have gotten to this section right from the clients page of the Meraki portal but what makes this reporting useful is that you can do it right from here, right? It's easy to navigate. And once you are here, if you are doing wireless troubleshooting, you can look into the information of the wireless connection. As you could see, it is showing you the, the channel, the signal strength, the uh, capabilities of the clients. If you click here, it's going to show you uh, more information about it if you have 802.11r on and off and if there are any rules and the reporting goes deeper into it so let me come back here and it is the same information and, and again always pay attention to the time span that you are looking into this is based on last week right the report for the you know since, since last week until now but if you change that to the past day everything is going to look different right so always pay attention to to your time frame now if i change this if i click on the x as you could see that's going to take me back to the uh, wireless network of my network because that's what i was at before and um, you could see the downloads and the total bandwidth utilization in this section so let me go back to the entire network oh you know let's see uh, if we change to um to appliance which is the uh, the firewall in this case you're going to see the statistics for the appliance right as you could see before we had the ones for wireless and it was just for that access points and wireless related but in this case we're going to pay attention to the entire traffic that is going through my appliance through the network so this is something that is going to give you a broader and more detailed view of what's happening in your network before we were just looking into the wi-fi network now we're seeing everything that is going through the appliance wired and wireless and you could come over here and, and pay attention to the uh, if there's any alerts or, or if there's anything that looks suspicious to you. This is where you would come and, uh, and do your start your troubleshooting process. Uh, this information this information is super useful. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend time on every single item in here. 
but it's something good for you to know, uh, especially when you come here that tells you if there is any detectable or any detected anomalies or something that the system thinks that is an anomaly. If you could click here, you're going to see what's happening, right? Why are you using more traffic, more bandwidth on some days than the others, especially in a business environment? And this information can also help you plan for system upgrades, right? Like if you need to bring the system down for whatever reason to do an emergency or not an emergency, a high priority update, you want to do it at a time that is the least uh, cumbersome or intrusive for users. So you could plan, okay, you know, like on these days, on, on the average day, uh, I have uh, these more usage on the network than other days. So that's going to help you plan for that. And that's, lastly, you can make your life easier. How? You could, you know, either ex export these reports in an Excel format, if you want to use it into another type of reporting, or you can, you know, you can just come here and click on Excel. And that's doing, you know, I have virus total. Let me wait for that to finish. As you could see, this is done right here. And it is going to show you the uh, similar information. I mean, the same information on what we saw before the top clients, manufacturers, so on and so forth. Or you could um, email a report. So you click on this button and you click on email. And then you will type the uh, recipients that you would like to email the report to. The good thing about this is that you don't have to do any SMTP configuration or anything like that. This is going to come directly from Cisco Meraki in the cloud to you. And it's going to be in this format down here. You know, let me just bring this over. And you could see the uh, report. This is uh, a sample of, uh, of a report that was emailed, right? And lastly, you can always uh, customize your report right here. You can select the fields that you would like to be emailed to you. And you can also schedule a report. And this is going to be, in my case, I'm getting this because I already have a uh, saved report that is scheduled uh, for me to get notified. And that is based on the, uh, on the old format. Perhaps you're not going to get this. But um, you could uh, set up schedule, add, you know, report name, report. And then you add the recipient here, whatever recipient you want to add. And then uh, the frequency of the report, if you want that report to be um, sent daily, weekly, or monthly, and in which format you would like to um, send that to HTML or plain text. Um, and you could add your logo here. Now, this is useful if you are an MSP and you manage the network for other organizations, or even if you want to do it for your own organization, right? Like you schedule these reports to be sent to you. Perhaps you need to submit this in a monthly report that you have to do for your managers. So you could include this very useful information there. But again, this is the reporting capabilities of Meraki. We can go deeper into other details of reporting, but this is going to get you started and it's going to give you the uh, bullet points for you to troubleshoot the network, to pay attention to what's happening within the network and how to act upon that. As always, I hope that this video was useful to you. If you found this information useful, please click on the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day and I will talk to you on the next video.